Ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure in welcoming to our stage Jack Welch and Steve Adler. Thank you. Um, I, I wanted to start just because we, we could chit chat, but I really wanted to get uh, to start with the Middle East, uh, in, because I think actually it tells you a lot and tells us a lot about how much the world has changed. When we're thinking about, we couldn't have imagined what's happened in the last few weeks uh, from, from Tunisia to Egypt uh, to Libya. And it, ha it does seem to me that it has a lot to do uh, with the changes in the world of communication, of how people can operate. Uh, talk to us about what kind of lessons we should be learning from that, both as Western governments and thinking about how to respond, but also just what we need to learn about how people uh, effectuate change now and, and what that tells us. I think there's a couple of things we've learned. <clears throat> one, one is we don't have a very effective uh, CIA operation these days. We're constantly surprised. It's a front page mm -hmm. story every time one of these blow blows up. And in the Middle East, it's a lot more complicated than, than it appears. Uh, each one of these countries is an individual situation. Egypt is a lot different uh, than, say, Libya. And how they end up is going to be a lot different, too. And, not, and none of us can really plot exactly how it's going to be. But the lesson is that whether you're running a company or you're running a country, information flow is, permeates every corner of the place. And there are no secrets. You know, you go back 30 years, and information was power. Yeah. Information isn't power at all anymore. Everybody has it. If you capitalize on it and communicate with a vengeance, you can take some of the heat and anger out of those who feel unfairly treated. But if you suppress them, whether they be in a company where you say, shut up, Mm -hmm. Or you be in a, in a country where you put them in jail. Mm -hmm. uh, the idea of getting your people engaged, involved, communicated with is a winner. And if you don't, you might not have the same explosions you get in these countries in a company, mm -hmm. but you'll find yourself on the outside more quickly than you would have in the past. Mm -hmm. are, are, are we underestimating... Uh, the ability for individuals now to get together through the social network and, if, and push for democratic change? In other words, are we being too uh, limited to our traditional geopolitical understanding of how you work with countries, or should we be uh, being imagining the ability for people to do this a little well, bit more easily? Well, you have to wonder yeah. what would have ha happened in Iran had we behaved differently at that moment when they had the chance. I, I don't know the answer to that. You probably don't either right now, but there are these moments that, uh, that I think today an enlightened leadership will understand that it's just a matter of time that mm. people will get voice mm -hmm. and want to and have their dignity. But when I wrote, every individual must have vo vo voice and dignity, that was 1980. Mm -hmm. So it took a while. Yeah, but with, with a so social network, whether it be Twitter, Facebook, or whatever, mm. people now have voice. Mm. And they're, and they're doing it all the time. I mean, you, you, you see it constantly. You see, I, I see it in my school, mm -hmm. which is an online school. And uh, if they don't like a course that we're teaching or the teacher they have, we get deluged. The teachers are evaluated. Mm -hmm. We don't have to worry about all these arguments we're having about te te teacher evaluations. Uh -huh. in, in our place, boom, right back in your face. The course is a bore, the teacher's a bore, whatever. Mm -hmm. You get hit pretty fast. Yeah. Do you like that? Love it. Yeah. <laughs> you, you know I like a scrap. Right. But, but, but what, what impact does the, would that have, do you think, on a company? For example, if you were um, CEO of GE today and uh, you still had hundreds of thousands of employees, how would you think about it differently? How would you manage you know, differently? I, Steve, I spent 21 years as CEO. Yeah. Every month I went to our educational place up in Croton on right. Hudson. Yeah. I sat in front of, I stood in front of, 180 students, you usually at middle man manager and below, and tried to say what we, where we we're going, why we we're going there, and what was in it for them. Yeah. That was a tedious process. 180 at a time. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd be there for four hours, then I'd go to the bar and drink with them for three more hours <laughs> to find out even more. Uh -huh. That was all trying to do what you can do today. 
so much faster, so much more open. It would be so much better. And then we had this process called workout as a result of that, where we tried to bring that atmosphere to the field where people could have voice. Getting voice in an organization is so damn hard because hierarchies squelch. They just do, no matter how hard you try, they do. And so this social network gives a CEO such a better pulse. What's happening? We, we used to run every six months a sur survey of 40,000 employees, different ones all the time, blind surveys. Hmm. And, we'd get, and we didn't ask them if they liked the food in the cafeteria or their parking place. We asked them, are, are you feeling what we're saying? Is, are, are we doing what we're saying? Mm -hmm. Is it real? And we would get back, yeah or no. Mm -hmm. and, and, and we were fighting all the time to find out if our message was getting through, if in fact we were touching them, if we were getting into their skin, not mm -hmm. under it. Yeah. Yeah. And it was, it, it was a, so this tool you have now is so much better. Yeah. I, mean, I think it's a dream to run a company today with this. Given what you know now, what would you do differently yeah. uh, if you had your time at uh, GE over again? Or any place. And I do yeah. it now in private equity. Mm -hmm. I act faster. Mm -hmm. Look, I mean, none of us ever act fast enough. Let's wait. Let's give another chance. Let's give Mary another six months. We've had her for 30 years. <laughs> she hasn't performed in 30 years. Let's look at her for six more months. <laughs> you know, that... Yeah. That's all over the place, okay? And, uh, and I think you got to, mm -hmm. you, you never act too fast. How, how many times in your life you said, oh, God, I wish I waited another six months before I did that? <laughs> Very few times. All right, I'll ask one more question. If, if you, you think we're... No, go ahead. Okay. We'll, one more, and then we'll okay. yeah, um, let people go home. Yeah, there, there's been enormous growth in productivity since the early 70s. Why hasn't there been a, a parallel uh, growth in wages over that period? Well, there were. We've had a stagnant wage period in the last... Uh, in the last uh, 10 years, mm -hmm. where we've really had it, where, we're, where we've had this incredible output and we haven't grown fast enough. The GDP, we've got a capacity, particularly coming out of a rece re re recession here, to grow. We ought to be having growth at 5 and 6%. Mm -hmm. we're, we're, we're growing well below yeah. the capacity of the, of, the, of the country to win. What's happened is globalization mm -hmm. has taken much of the wage growth out with yeah. enormous comp competition, and we're run running at much lower than full capacity. And that's, that's created a problem. And that story of, way, of, of wage growth was not true up to 2000. Mm -hmm. that, that, that's a 10-year phenomenon now. And it's not a Republican or a dem Democratic problem. That's just a structural problem as the global markets yeah. came together with, with newer plants, more plants, yeah. more competitive nature. Okay, well, uh, final question. What are you most excited about and what are you most worried about going forward uh, in, in terms of the future? Well, the thing, I'm ex the thing I'm worried about is how fast we can deal with the deficit, mm -hmm. how fast we can get our arms around this spending what we don't have. We, we, we talk in billions like they're nothing. Uh, we, we appoint a consumer credit agency with this uh, Harvard professor and... Uh, and we give her a $400 million budget alone just to build up an organization. Who do you give $400 million to to build an organization? We toss money around like it's nothing. So dealing with the deficit, tightening the operations of government, uh, not over-regulating. But what I'm most excited about is our best days are ahead. I mean, we're, 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 we're going to innovate. We're going to grow. We've got brighter kids than ever. We're, we're enthusiastic. We'll find ways to beat all these problems. We, we always do, and we will. Uh, but we continually have to put our backs against the wall before we react. And uh, you'd like to get ahead of it a little bit. But our best days are really ahead of us. Well, that's a great note on which to end. Thank you so much, Jack, Thank for you. being our first guest. We really appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. you very much.